everybody. This is City Scrapper. Thank you so much for joining me today. Today I have a scrapbook layout process video and I'm making this layout using the October My Creative Scrapbook Kit and I am lucky enough to be a guest designer for My Creative Scrapbook this month. So as you could see, I started by taking a piece of pattern paper and covering it with clear gesso. And I like to do a crosshatch pattern where I go all one way and then I go the other way just to make sure that I don't miss any spots. Now I'm using some sprays on my background and I use quite a few different sprays. Right now I'm using a, a Tattered Angels Glimmer Mist. I use Apricot Jelly. I also use some Prima sprays. On this layout, I use Spring Dandelion and Pot Marigold, and I'm just spreading those around in that diagonal pattern, and with the plastic and that smushing technique, just trying to make some interesting shapes and certain areas where the color is more concentrated and other areas where it looks a little lighter. And you can see here I'm adding a little bit more of the orange color so that it'll be a little deeper in some spots and now I'm going into the purple I will say that I do dry my colors in between each application so after I put on all the orange I will dry it very well so that it doesn't bleed together with the purple so this as you can see is a very intense color and it's a little scary right now when I look at it because that color looks really rather shocking, but you'll see that as I go along, I add some other colors and uh, the color gets toned down in several ways. And I'm putting my photo right where I just had it so that big, huge splash of color won't be visible uh, once I have my photo down there. And I do spend a long time on the background and I put a lot of different colors now that I have the orange and the that it's a purplish blue color almost like a royal blue but royal blue and purple look kind of similar to me so I'm also adding some old world brown that's also a tattered angels glimmer mist and just trying to use that to add some balance to those really bright colors that I added the photo that I'm using for this layout is a picture of my two daughters on a trip that we made to Salem, Massachusetts recently. And if you've never been to Salem, Massachusetts in October, it's a really fun place to go if you like Halloween. There's so many things to do there that are Halloween related. There's scary things, there's things for people who don't wanna to be too scared. And there's a street fair, there are characters all over. Some of the characters are there year after year, and we take pictures of them every year. And other characters like Jack Skellington that you see in this picture, he was new to us. We hadn't seen him before. So we were really happy to see him since that's one of my daughter's favorite characters. And we've been going there for several years. We're not going to be going this year due to our current situation in, in the world, but I hope to go back again next year because it's a really fun tradition that I'm really glad we started. We started going there about four years ago and we never get tired of it. Now I'm going back in with those same colors that I used in the center, those larger areas of color, and I'm putting small splatters, little tiny splatters, along the edge of the big patches of color. And I feel like that kind of helps to bring the background and the large area of color together. So I'm just adding the splatters in all three colors. Here I'm adding the orange. And I do get some of the splatters on the big area of color, but that's okay. And as you can see, I do add a lot of layers of color. Just going back, there's that one little blob that I'm working on now and I didn't really like the way the color looked there. The brown and the purple had mixed together and it looked a little bit too gray for me. So what I'm doing now is I am adding some water droplets which is a great technique that I've seen many scrapbookers use when they're using uh, sprays and gesso in the background so you could lift up some of the color and 
this is a, a technique that I use quite a bit. I love the way it lifts off the color and just gives a great texture to the larger areas of color. And now I kind of felt like there was something missing from the orange. I wanted there to be a little bit more of the yellow in there, so I added a little bit more of those Prima sprays in there in a yellow color. And I have that royal blue that looks a little bit like purple in there, but I wanted a true purple in there as well. So I added some of the color from the this Distress, Distress Oxide pair that you see off to the right. And I'm going to be listing all of the materials that I use in the description box. So if I don't mention any particular color, you'll be able to find it there. And you can see that I do keep going back and repeating some of the techniques. I'll add more color, I go in, I sprinkle water, I add more color. It's kind of just trial and error until you have it the way that you want it. Now I am adding some white splatters. I really like to add white splatters. I feel like it just brings the whole, all the different colors and the whole background together. And I was using some watered down white acrylic paint for that. I wanted to use this stencil that came with the kit this month. It's perfect, I think, for October. It doesn't look exactly like a spider web, but the way the lines are crossed reminds me of a spider web, so I thought it would be perfect for this particular layout. And so I mixed together some Prima white sand texture paste and some Momenta semi-gloss stencil paste in white, and I felt like this would be a perfect combination because there'd be texture, but the color would be more white than if I just use the texture paste. So I'm just choosing a few places along the large area of color to add some texture paste to. And I'm liking the way that looks. I do want to go back in with that purple again and just punch up the color a little bit. Sometimes it takes a couple of coats or applications of a color before it really has a deep enough color. So you can see that I'm adding the colors and adding it to the places I had it before and adding it to some new places. And I like spraying it with water so that it looks natural. The, the color spreads out very naturally when you spray it with water. But then you do have to apply it a few times. Now I finally finished my mixed media background and I'm working on the photo. I chose this black checkered paper that was in the kit. And I am also using some solid black cardstock and just offsetting the papers a little bit just to separate the photo from the background. Next, I'm going to be working on the embellishments. And there were so many perfect embellishments in this kit for this layout. There were tons and tons of pumpkins. And I decided that I wanted to put some black ink along the edges. So this is an older stamp pad. So I'm just applying the ink right from the stamp pad. It's not super saturated, so it works out perfectly. It's, um, you probably recognize it. It's one of those Tim Holtz Little Distress Ink stamp pads. And I do spend a very long time putting the embellishments on and taking them off and rearranging them. And something that happens off camera is on the left, I felt that that cluster was a little too low. So you will see later on that that cluster kind of moves up and changes a little bit. That way that flow of embellishments across the page looks a little more natural that it's not you know so low on the left there. I'm adding some leaves. They're just die cut leaves from a piece of black paper and then I emboss them with black embossing powder several times. And I also, just after I embossed them a couple of times, I just threw a little bit of orange. It was a Recollections brand, uh, orange, bright orange embossing powder, just to add a little something. You can barely see it, but it does add a little something extra to the background. And the black embossing powder was Moxie brand. So just to add a little something up in that corner, I ripped a little bit of the paper and added some more of that black checkered paper behind there. And the fall 
chipboard that was also in the kit this month and that was also embossed using the same moxie black embossing powder and then a little sprinkle of the orange embossing powder and I'm just arranging everything across the page just trying to get it to like I said flow across the page and you can see there how on the left that cluster is too low and while I did move it up there were some things that were stuck down really well with the adhesive I used so I wasn't able to move everything up but in general I was able to shift the cluster up so that it followed the patch of color and now I'm using the remnants of the chipboard stickers to lift up my photo a little bit from the background since I used up the majority of the chipboard stickers. Here I'm using Liquitex heavy duty matte gel to attach everything down. And I love using this gel. Nothing moves after it dries. It's an excellent adhesive. I do spend a long time arranging things, cutting out a few more things. There were a lot of papers that had great images to fussy cut this month. So I use a lot of those images to add to the, the background. Now I'm using some heavy duty gesso. It's white gesso and I'm using a cosmetic sponge and just adding some white to the, some of the flowers and some of the embellishments. It just kind of brings things again together with all the embellishments. It gives them a cohesiveness. And I did try adding some of it to the those black leaves that I cut out, but in the end I decided I wanted to keep those black. Here I am, I'm using letters from a previous My Creative Scrapbook Kit to spell out in Salem, so my title is Fall in Salem. And another touch that you could see that I added around the page are black butterflies, and those butterflies are a wood veneer that came in the kit, and I had also embossed those at the same time emboss the leaves and the fall in the title. And those fussy cut leaves were the final touch. And that is my layout, everybody. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you saw something today that inspires you to create a scrapbook layout. I hope you will check out the beautiful October kits on the My Creative Scrapbook website. I will link that down below. I hope everybody has a fantastic day. Thank you again so much for joining me, and I'll see everybody again soon. Bye-bye, everybody.